from the moment we make that phone call and tell a patient that they have breast cancer, you, you get this pause. You can hear their voice crack and it's just heartbreaking. You have to be able to talk to them and pull them back on the journey. And it's a scary journey. You can barely meet a person on the street anywhere that doesn't know someone or know someone who has a family member with breast cancer. The mission of Edith Sanford is to do everything we can to diagnose, treat, and take care of breast cancer patients in the best way, not only that we know how, but that science and technology knows as well. We have a phenomenal breast cancer program that I would put up against any other here in the United States. So if you're diagnosed with breast cancer or cancer at Sanford, you're going to get the best opportunity, you know, to have the best treatment option and additional treatment options on top of the standard of care. Having everything there in one building and bringing that whole team together, it creates such a unique experience for the patients because they can trust that their whole team is working together and communicating together and coming up with the best plan for them. Having all of the practitioners there at one time to formulate that plan with the patient, I think think really provides the best outcomes. In this region, it absolutely is rare. And while there are multidisciplinary teams throughout the country, I just don't think they have what we have. Our oncologists have said this to me, Dave, I don't want to ever go into a room again and say, I don't have anything else for you. That's exactly what Sanford Research and what Edith Sanford stands for right now. We have a lot of dedicated people that start with the nurses and the nurse navigators that help get our patients organized into the system. You know, we have increasing numbers of cancer survivors, not only for breast cancer, but for many cancer sites. And a lot of that has to do with investments in treatments, particularly some of the medications we use to treat breast cancer have made a big change in the survivorship itself. Every cent counts because we can explore more things answer more questions, test more approaches, put more people on clinical trials, even raise that 13% of people on clinical trials even higher because there'll be more options to choose from. When I heard about everything that we were gonna do to advance breast care, I just thought, wow, I'm, I'm in the right place at the right time that we can make some magic happen. One of the biggest ones that it funds now and is increasingly important in the future is the Nurse Navigation Program. Navigators are funded 100% off of donations and they are just such a crucial piece to the entire journey. Having those funds available to help patients feel like themselves again or help them navigate the world of healthcare and get access to what they need because we're there holding their hand through the whole thing. The future of Edith Sanford is simple. We want to be at the cutting edge of treating and preventing breast cancer. The more funding that we have and the more support that we have behind that, the more research we can do. Philanthropy is phenomenally important. We, there's so many things we wouldn't be able to do if it wasn't for the donations that we receive. Donor dollars help in so many ways. They come in with their bandanas on or their wigs on from their chemotherapy and I see them and I hear their stories and I hear some of them tell me how grateful they are that they've had the assistance. A lot of the diagnostic imaging technology advances almost at an exponential pace. All those technologies are coming and we have to be able to make those available and that additional funding really helps that. It's one in eight women are gonna have a diagnosis of breast cancer. And that's, that's somebody's mom, grandma, aunt, sister, friend. We're coming so far and we have so much further to go. So we can increase our capacity uh, many fold uh, through the additional dollars that come through philanthropy. It's nice going to sleep at night knowing you're making a contribution to someone's lives. It really is and it's nice knowing that you're making a contribution to something that has so much personal impact as well. I think many people know I lost a sister to breast cancer. She has two granddaughters right now that she's never met. If she was alive today, she'd be saying, what could I do to make sure they don't go through what I went through? And we have the ability to screen and identify if a woman is more susceptible to breast cancer, and that's exactly what we need to do. favorite thing about my wife is her smile and if you've never met Lisa you always get the truth and if you go out at night it could get pretty wild pretty crazy she's tough very very tough she was just super strong throughout the whole thing 
It was in the summer of 2020. I was first having some aches and pains in my breast. And um, when I finally had the courage to think, okay, something is really wrong, um, I had that gut feeling. Once I got the diagnosis that I had breast cancer, things progressed pretty quickly from there. It was scary. It was very scary. That's all I remember. Your world falls apart, but you need to stay strong because of everyone around you. I could be mad, I could be sad, I could be angry, or I'm just going to find joy in this and live each moment because I can't change it. People that I know in the community just raved about the Edith Center, and we never heard a bad word about the people there and their facilities and the technology that they have. And so we knew that was where we wanted to go. First step was just meeting with the surgical team and the plastic surgeons. I'll never forget Dr. Dirksen right before surgery. I was really nervous and he, he said, Let, let's say a prayer. And, and he prayed, and we prayed before surgery. That was monumental. I knew, I knew I was gonna make it that day. I knew I was in the right place. And then we started making decisions about chemotherapy and what type of treatment and how long we would have treatments for. That was, that was a really hard part. Not having the energy and missing out. I missed going to the kids' activities, playing ball in the yard. I missed sitting around playing games with them at night. It was very hard not to work. I love my job and I knew those kids would get me through it. You, you go through your treatments, and every once in a while while you're sitting there, somebody will ring a bell. So you wait, and you go through every treatment thinking, okay, my time is gonna come. And once it does, it was the best feeling ever. You get, it is such a celebration, and the nurses all stand up, and as you're ringing, you just know you're bringing hope to somebody else that's sitting there that day, that they have the hope that they are going to ring that bell too. Being there, the doctors were amazing. They're fabulous. They did a wonderful job. Definitely, because without him, she wouldn't be here. It's a very powerful place that you're donating to and the things they do is amazing. It would be my hope that someday other women or my daughters, or my grandchildren, could have an easier route when it comes to breast cancer. I'm very proud of my mom. She's awesome. She's the best mom I could ever ask for. She's perfect. I'm just truly grateful for the entire team at Sanford. It's very humbling. I didn't expect. All the people, all the people that cared about me. I'm stronger than I thought.